beginning of seventh half hour through top phase one and phase two, that's the top July start. Okay, so everyone, I'm looking in the evolution general folder for both classes. Go and look here. There's lots of little videos. They're really, really good. If you just want to, you know, see it, okay, then go and watch. And then remember these hominid evolution lessons, they're there as well. And then I've put in some general ones to watch. And at the bottom here, there's textbook questions to do and model answers. Read the question in the te textbook, do it, write, write it down, keywords or whatever. Just so you know, that you have enough time and then look at the model answer. Okay, and then in this folder here, summary worksheet and extra notes. Um, I think I'm just going to go to the one with the model answer. Although I think it's in a different order. And I don't know how to turn it around here. Yeah, I'm going to need to turn it around. And I don't want to fail. Um, yes. If you try and double click on it. Okay. So the grade eights don't understand the difference between portrait and landscape. Oh, okay. Now why have I can't remember that one? Oh, Some new table. Oh, yeah. Now, I can See if you can download it. Okay. Yeah, can I can download it. Yeah, do on the clicks on the little ticks thing. I mean the little dots. Oh, there. Oh, no. Go. It might open. Okay. Now you've got, a, you've got to rotate up there. And I can do it here as well. Okay. I just put all the two Okay. All right, guys. So I think it's in a slightly different order. All right, but at the front, that was just like an introduction right at the beginning way of going with evolution. Then the second page, that's revision of grade 10. You remember doing this? The superposition of fossils in different strata and working out which ones are younger, which ones are older. Do you remember that? And I know that you've done that with you. And I did it as well. So go and look there. All right? Then the next page, you know, you don't have to work through these. All right? But we, um, last year, we, we were to, you know, what milestones, what did you, what did we call it, ma'am, you call it, um, I call it milestones, you call it keys. Index fossils. Hmm? That one. Index, Index fossils. Something, yes. Okay? So, what makes, you know, the worms different to the others? Well, worms don't have legs, they, ha they have legs. Oh, uh, um, so that's not. Key, 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 something. Okay, so that was just what this little exercise was about, but they're not going to ask you to draw a cladogram. We were just going through how do they figure it out, all right? And then at the bottom, we even made our own. So we said that all, okay, let me go through this rather. So here, A means, where's A? A, they've got segmented bodies. Then, worms are segmented bodies, but all of these do too, but hang on, B, Worms don't have legs, so everything above B has legs. That's a, a milestone. Everything above has legs. Then, hang on, spiders have eight. Everything above here has six. So milestone C is six legs. If, um, um, D and E don't have wings. It's an ant, I think, and a grasshopper. But everything above has wings. F is wings. All right, then here... They've got one pair of wings, I think that's a fly. Then um, moths and butterflies have two pairs of wings. So that's G. Then, um, oh, dragonflies as well. So that's a dragonfly. Dragonflies have see-through membranous wings, but butterflies have scaly wings. Okay. And then at the bottom, we actually just work through and, you know, how do they do this? So slugs, catfish, frogs, tiger, and humans, they all have cells. So right at the bottom, Mm -hmm. I need that. What does it say? Oh, yes. Um, then, okay, so. Oh, cells. So, of course, you say cells right at the bottom here. So, all of these above have cells. Slugs don't have a backbone, all of the rest do. So, backbone is the next milestone. So, everything above you has a backbone, slugs don't. Legs. Slugs don't have, um, you know what a slug is? It looks like a snail without a shell. Yeah. Okay. Catfish, they don't have legs, they've got fins. But everything else does have legs. So legs, everything else has legs. Alright, hair. 
It's like catfish and frogs don't have hair, but tigers and humans do. So hair there, tiger and human above. And then opposable thumbs. Only humans have opposable thumbs. So just before human, opposable thumbs. That's how they work it out. Now we used to, um, we were going to take it to bits and we were going to work with um, Dr. Ian Mackay and he's the, 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 the chap that um, actually wrote the section in the textbook. And we do this with the hominid skulls. We actually do it in the middle of the cranial, activity, um, cranial cavity space and it's really, really fun, but unfortunately we didn't get to go there. Okay. But don't worry, you have everything that you need. All right, so there's another one showing different milestones. A simple primitive backbone, a proper backbone, four limbs, an egg, an amniotic egg with a shell, and you know, amniotic egg can land on land, and then hair and milk um, distinguishes mammals from all the rest. All right, novelty or milestone. All right, then I gave another one. So which organisms have inherited feature X? All of them. Which organisms have inherited feature Y? Only C. Maybe it's a mammal with hair. Mammal with mammary glands, something more advanced. Or Homo sapiens with the bigger brain. Well, not bigger, but more complex brain. Because Neanderthal has a bigger brain. Alright, then. Oh, I need the picture now. So, let's go back here. Alright, so now let's just go down. So I think you need. You know, work through these. Oh, yes, geological time scale. We're happy with reading of those. But please make sure that you draw horizontal lines. And don't, you know, if the lines, uh, it's a bit difficult on this one, don't just say, oh, it's about 200. If it's 230 and not 250, you have to be precise. You can't just say, oh, it's about, or your line skew. Because like drawing on a graph, um, rise and run, it's got to be perpendicular. So you've got to be very careful. So that one's not very complex. And then I just gave another one. You don't need to know these. You need to be able to read off of them. Okay? Um, that's the one we've just done. Look at that. This one I gave, I found it on the internet. And it just allowed you to practice. So will you all go home and do this piece? It's practicing. Who's the common ancestor of all these organisms? So who is the common ancestor? When did number one arrive? 40 years ago. 40 what? I'm going to spray you. You're going the wrong way. Didn't I warn you not to go the wrong way? There's 40, here's 45. When did number one arrive? 43 or 44. 43 or 44 million years ago. Sorry? Oh, okay. <laughs> 43, 44. Okay. Alright. What does a shaded circle mean in this? Okay, let's do it. What does a shaded circle mean in this phylogenetic tree? <laughs> okay, look at the top here. It says today. So, what does a shaded one mean? Huh? Extinct. Okay. Um, which organism could be called a living fossil? Something like a coelacanth. Which one's a living fossil? Which one has hardly changed since millions of years ago? Still alive today. <laughs> well, I'm quite happy with that. I'm happy with that. Okay, who's the living fossil? Can you choose any number then? Come on, guys, it's hardly ch it hasn't changed from millions of years ago. One thing I want. One thing I want. The duck one. Where are you looking? Josh, the duck one. That's a one. Next to the straight. Yeah, one more thing. Literally a straight line. So which number has hardly changed? The duck one. So, 108. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought you said number 8. I'm like, what? 108. Okay, got you. Sorry. Alright, next one. 
How, because it's hard, it's, it's ch it hasn't changed. We know it hasn't, there hasn't been any other species formed along the way. Okay. Um, how would you say organism 110 is related to organism 105? Is it not related distantly, closely, or very closely? 110 and 105. 110 here, very, very distant. and 105. Are they related? All the way back, yes, to number one, but they are very distantly related. All right, question number five. Which of, the, okay. Which of the two pairs are more likely to look like each other? Organisms 105 and 6 or 107 and 8? 105 and 6 or 107 and 8? 105 and 6. Because they're from the same, from the same line, number 92. And what is number 92? It's a common ancestor that is more, more, I mean, I mean more complex. A more recent, yeah, sorry, what did she say? More recent ancestor. More recent common ancestor. But if you look at 107 and 108, where, where is the common ancestor? All the way <laughs> to something like 30 million years ago. 92 was about how many million years ago? Oh, okay. All right, next one. Start from the oldest species and work upwards. Start from the oldest and work upwards. Are there any examples of lines that join? Are there any lines that join? Do different species become one? Can you see that? No, they each had their own evolutionary lineage, their own... Mutations that led, gave rise to new species. Okay? Alright, what, what do we call this? So we had common ancestor one gave rise to many different, many of which are extinct, many of some of which are still alive. Emerging from one common ancestor, we call it? Or a adaptive radiation. Okay, becoming you know, adapted to new environments by, by virtue of having random mutations. Yes? Okay. 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 With a, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say with a real old Okay, next one. Um, give an estimate of the average length of time that any one of these species was found on Earth. So which one was found on Earth for the shortest time? And which the longest time? Who was around for the... Sh uh, I can't remember what the answer was. Which one's around for the longest time? One Earth? Okay, and the shortest time? So over here. Yeah, okay. Wait, Matt. Does that diagram indicate that number one still exists? No. Number one is a common ancestor and it was around and then died out. How do you know died out? Well, fossil evidence. No, but I'm saying on, from the diagram, how can you see it died out? Because you don't see it at the top here. It's not extinct. It's not extinct. It's extinct. So shouldn't it be grey? Sorry? Or is it only grey? Oh, really? Is it only really grey? Okay. Does it mean? These are end lines. So these are extinct end lines. But yeah, yeah then these will also be extinct. They're not surviving anymore. Yeah, yeah. they maybe should have had another colour. Maybe they should have had the ones at the top, dark grey or something like that. Okay, okay, so these could be the ones they find along the way, like trans transitional fossils like Homo, um, Homo, Homo naledi or um, Sediba, where they're trying to figure out now where does it fit in. Okay, all right, next one. How long ago, wait, what was the common ancestor of organism 109 and 110? 109, 109 and 110? Yeah, yeah, okay. And then the last one was how long ago did the organism you named, okay, this we've done, but um, so how long ago did organism 108 evolve? Ooh. No, what did we say? Number eight. Eight, sorry. Yeah, so how long ago did it evolve? Yeah, sorry. Huh? Yeah, what? 
In the middle is what? That little tick line. What is that? 37 and a half million years ago. But number eight is there. So 36 million years ago would be a good enough answer. Okay. Then I gave others here. So you can go and look at those yourself. The models on um, Google Classroom as well. And it's on Moodle. All right. How much time have we got? Okay. Okay, let's do a thing. Which primate evolved first? So this is a group of primates, new world and old world. Which primate evolved first? Lemo. Name two primates, Lemo over here. Name two primates that developed most recently from the same common ancestor as humans. Gorilla and chimp from the same common ancestor. All right, that was just a short one. Okay, so these are primates. The names of extinct animals are printed in italics, e.g. I'm not going to say that. The drawings show animals that are alive today. They're alive today. These guys aren't. Okay, do I need to go to this or do you want to go to this one? Skip. Yes or no? Skip. Yes. Okay, how many millions of years ago did Perinicia first appear? Perinicia um, appeared? I was... Yeah. Forty-one. Yeah, about forty-one million years ago. During which geological period did the apes and monkeys begin to evolve? Um, the apes and monkeys. Paleocene. Yes, apes and monkeys. So geological area, the Paleo, late Paleocene. Okay. Um, which primates, group of primates alive today are the closest relatives of the lorises? That's what Mamma thought about the other day. Bush babies. Lorises, the bush babies, because they've got a more common, uh, recent common ancestor. But remember what, what was said is that different people have different interpretations. So you might see in one set of notes, you know, gorillas, chimps, and humans arranged in a different way, and in another set of notes in a different way, based on the evidence, DNA, fossil evidence, whatever. Remember the people's interpretations of how they think they are related. All right, so don't get shocked if you see other types, other diagrams where the arrangement is slightly different. All right, and then the last one. So I put this in because now we've looked at the different um, hominids. So, um, okay, so this one you've got to, I'm just trying to see if it's a little fuzzy there. Okay, no, it's fine. On this diagram, the circles represent the different species. So if you look at the bottom here, the circles are the species. The bar is when each species lived based on fossil evidence. And then the dotted lines represent relationships between the species. So when did Australopithecus afarensis, what, what is afarens, uh, Australopithecus afarensis' uh, common name? Lucy. Lucy in the sky. You've never heard that song. We're dying. You've got to go and listen to the Beatles song. I love that story. Okay. All right. The Far East. Eh? East Africa. Afarensis. Okay. The Horn of Africa. Wait, now. Mm. When that song made? In the 60s. <laughs> it's a lovely song. It's a it's classic. A classic. <laughs> go and listen to it. I'm educated people don't listen to Beatles. No one knows Beatles. We know Beatles. Don't listen to that song. Okay. All right. Where did Australopithecus? We should give um, prizes for who can say this the fastest. When did Australopithecus afarensis first appear? According to this diagram. Australopithecus afarensis. I can't even remember where it is. Oh yeah, there. When did it first appear? There. When did it first appear? Oh, long ago. More recent. Present. There's four million years ago. There's three. So when did Afarensis, according to this diagram, when did it appear? 3.8. 3.8 million years ago. Okay. All right, next one. Which species was the direct ancestor of Paranthropus bozia? We don't need to know that one. So, Paranthropus bozia. Okay, can you see it? Yeah. What was the question? Which, Which species was the direct right ancestor? ancestor? Okay. Sorry? <laughs> so, 
Which one's the direct ancestor? Ethiopicus. Yes. Yeah, that one. Same difference. Um, which species is uh, which species is most closely related to Homo habilis? What's the common name for Homo habilis? Handyman. Uh, Why? Because he made tools. Made tools. Okay, so what's the question? Oh my gosh, I'm in the holiday. Which is most closely related to Homo habilis? Can you see Homo habilis? According to this interpretation, who is the most closely related to Homo habilis? Homo ergaster. Genus Homo, right? And for how long did Homo ergaster, I think yours is tough, hey, this is an old one. How long did Homo ergaster live? Okay, let's work it out. Less than half a million years. Josh, this Okay? I mean, if you had to measure here, if you measured that and then measured that, it's probably half. So, how, for how long did Homo ergaster live? Between this line and this line is how many years? A million years, so how many guests have lived for? Yeah, I think when I measured it was close to 500,000 or yeah, a little bit less. Yeah. Yes. Because it's all curved, how have you measured it? Oh no, I'm just looking at the, the little bar here. Do you do you the bar? Yes, but I'm just looking at the trees. Oh, you mean that? Oh, I'm just looking at that. Length relative to there. Just that to there. I mean, if you look over here, for well, how many millions of years is Homo erectus? Now, what is Homo erectus? Sorry? Stand up. I mean, Emily said that as well. Alright, so how, um, how, for how many millions of years did Homo erectus survive? Six, fifteen, six hundred. Okay, so from present to. Okay, so how long is that? How long was Homo erectus around for? 1.75 okay. million years. Okay. It's not, it's just not, uh, it's not 2 million years, and you know, they died out before the present, obviously, and they went around then. But that's this person, it's based on fossil evidence. Who knows what fossils we are still going to find, okay? Alright, then at the bottom here, which species survived in a way? Why are, number E, why are some of the lines not linked to others? Why are there gaps here? The species aren't related. Why do they think the species aren't related? Because it's probably like they well, haven't found the fossil in between there. Yeah, so along comes Lee Berger and they find um, Sediba. Australopithecus Sediba, which they kind of say, well, is it Australopithecus, is it Homo? They're even having that argument. And then they find home and a lady, and then they find, you know, town child, and they find all these little things along the way. And they're trying to d d interpret the relationship. People, if I walked past a bunch of bones in a rock, I would walk past. They are so trained. So for um, Ron Clark to take those little foot bones, I mean, it amazes me that they take those and go, mm -mm, that's not whatever, whatever that is, mm. really? It looks like a stick to me. <laughs> no, seriously, you've got to, you've got to, You've got to um, appreciate the passion which, with which these scientists and researchers, they are passionate about this. Then I kind of think, wow, that's amazing, because they are really passionate about their field. When, when, when we do take um, grade 12 to bits, and they take us into the fossil room, where they're sitting there with their little drills, and they're going, and they're digging out this fossil for months, getting it out of the rock. That's passion for what you do. All right. It's like us trying to, you know, dig matrix out of the ground and get them through. <laughs> For how many years? Since when, then, did you say? Yeah. Okay, they're passionate about it. So Lee Berger, his son, saw this little, you know, piece of bone in a rock, and he went to his dad and said, oh, I think that's a fossil. I would not know that. They just know. Okay, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway. All right, the last question. Which species survived on Earth for the longest period of time? Okay, now... Just going back to what you were listening to this morning, so which are the ones that you need to be familiar with? All right, if we go back, are there any at the bottom here that you need to be familiar with? No. Okay, going up here? No. 
Ah. Australopithecus, Afroensis, named, common name, Lucy, Lucy found where? Uh, uh, I can't say what's it? Uh, the, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, the belly? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the rift belly. The rift belly. Yes, thank you. The Awash belly. I can't remember stuff like that. Alright, so Awash belly, that was Lucy, the horn of Africa, the Far East. Alright, what else do we need to know? Okay, which emerged later on. So the southern ape man, alright, Australopithecus africanus. Then, what else? Homo habilis, the handyman, made tools. Okay, then what else? So now we're into the genus Homo. So more human like. Okay, then Homo erectus. And that brought up right. Okay, so Homo neanderthalensis is over here. And remember, man said that they evolved from the common ancestor Homo heidelbergensis. Germany, the way I remember that, my dad was a printer. And he worked with these huge um, Heidelberg printing machines that came from Germany. I mean, huge things. They used to print magazines and big posters and everything, and one day his hand went in, but anyway, that's another story. So that's uh, Ger in Germany, I don't know Heidelbergensis. And can you see they were around? You know, they, they died out, what, how many millions of years ago? Where's the timeline gone? Oh, this one has, oh, okay, sorry, there it is. So when did they die out according to this interpretation? 240,000 years ago. Yeah, about that, okay. And here's Homo sapiens, and they have been around since about 200,000 years ago, modern day humans. Or, oh, yeah, sorry, I was looking at this one. Okay, Homo neanderthalensis, they died about, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah? 100,000 years ago, yeah. Okay, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Guys, have you got it? So go and look at those progression diagrams that Ma'am was showing you to see who came before who and why. You know, were they more arboreal? Were they able to move on grassland but also arboreal? Then they became, you know, in the Homo erectus walked on land, walked more, or walked, okay? Look at the shape of the feet, look at the spine, all of those things. Okay, have you got it? Yes, ma'am. I'm done. I think I'm done. Is there anything else? Okay. It's not so bad. You know what's scary? And the reason why we don't refer to the textbook, well, I don't refer to the textbook for this last section, is beautifully written. And if you go and read the parts that you do need to know, it's beautifully written. But Dr. Ian Berger, he really went to town in that last part, and he had lots of information. And you don't need to know all of that. So you can go and look, but there's really a lot of extract. So that's why we've cut it down to what we've done in class. Okay, guys, we are finished. Um, For the first yeah. time ever before prelims. Sorry? Don't touch uh, the test. No, no, I need those, please. Um, End of seventh lesson, grade 12, trace 1 and 2, 30th of July. Please.